Ayaw. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Happy anniversary po, 28th anniversary. Ang galing yung nag-google ah. Sabi ko, paano nyo nalaman? Sekreto lang yung mga accomplishment. Pero... Nalaman din. Sabi ko kasi, sabi ko kay Pastor Abal, sabi ko, hindi na kailangan ipakilala. Kasi pag ipapakilala mo, at ang dami kang sinabi patungkol sa speaker, ang laki ng expectation niyan. So, well, sorry na late po ako dahil galing po ako ng Ortigas, speaker po ako doon. At uh, sabi ko, magmamadali ako. Buti na lang. Kaso lang may traffic-traffic din. Ay yung... Uh, Alam mo, sarap pakinggan yung, yung uh, mga hymns sa mga churches. Ganda. Kanina, masaya. No? Pwede pala uwitin ng hindi papatay-patay. Eh, Di ba? <laughs> Kaya maganda. Very good. I miss that because I've been to several churches. Ay, naku. God is... Gaganyan-ganyan sila. Ewan ko, para sila mga... Anong tawag nito? Sila po ay, uh, anong tawag nila dyan sa, sa Tagalog, sa nagpaparada? Ayan, oo. Well, it's a great privilege and honor to be with you this afternoon. In behalf of Phoebe's College of Bible, we'd like to uh, greet you 28th anniversary. Congratulations to... our pastors to the leadership at patuloy ko pagpalain ng Panginoon na itong 28 years na to, we have seen that God is faithful. Napaka buti pang Panginoon, napakatapat ang ating Panginoon. At uh, salamat po sa mga liderato. Uh, just to encourage you that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Patuloy tayo maglingkod sa Panginoon hanggat ang meron pa tayong lakas buhay pa tayo hanggang pagdating niya, maglingkod tayo sa Panginoon. Kaya kayo mga kabataan, ay huwag niyo sayangin ang iyong buhay. Nag-iisa lamang yan at uh, maglingkod kayo sa Panginoon. At uh, challenge ko rin sa inyo, kahit dahil yung mga pastor po ay uh, hindi na rin po bumabata at uh, kailangan po may protege na yan at uh, mag-aral kahit hindi sa Phoebias. Uh, just because I'm a president of Phoebias, I'm promoting Phoebias, no. If the Lord is calling you to a, a full-time ministry, ay, um, sige, mag-aral kayo. Mag-aral kayo. Pero kung gusto nyo naman yung Phoebias, let me know. Di ba? Partner tayo. Okay. Sino may gusto? Oh, kahit isa lang. O oh, kung merong isa, kung merong isa, be sure na yung isa na yan ay hindi apat kasi ang letter T. Mamili kayo dyan. Yan ba ay tinulak? Yan ba ay tinopak? <laughs> yan ba ay tinadyakan? O pang-apat, yan ba ay tinawag? Ayan. Pag tinawag yan, for sure, uh, the Lord will provide for you. Pero pag merong isa, manalangin ka na. At then, I'll commit my, myself to you at uh, mag-aral ka sa Phoebias. Apat na taon na lang po ang Phoebias. Pero may basic Bible course pa rin. May meron pa rin basic Bible course. O sige, pastor, ha? pag may interesado na isa, I will give him. Kailangan yung magpastor. Ha? Kailangan magpastor. E kung dalawa naman, o pwede na rin, isang babae, isang lalaki, pero Christian education naman. Kasi bata ka pa, music, nandiyan ka pa eh. Pastor Patrick eh. O, huwag alalaya sa iglesia. Anong, kaya tambi binabalak ka, wag may tuloy na yun. Kung may Christian education at saka uh, pastoral, o sige, kahit dalawa, sige, bibigyan ko ng full tuition fee. Yeah. Oh. 
pag ayaw ninyo, diwag. Oh. Yeah, seriously, seriously. If there is one or two, you encourage. Uh, you encourage your young people to go there. And, um, uh, so, salamat sa Panginoon. At tayo po'y manalangin. Dakilang Diyos, kami po'y nagpapasalamat ngayong hapon na binigyan mo kami ng pagkakataon na makinig ng iyong salita. It is our prayer, Lord, that you will speak to each and every one and that you anoint your servant this afternoon that as he expounds your word, that your word will come out with power. When we know, Lord, that your word is powerful and it will penetrate into the hearts of your people. Lord, thank you for what you will be doing today. Wag mo kami hayaan na lumabasa ka Lugar na ito na hindi po nahamon, hindi po natuto sa iyong salita. Panginoon, napakabuti mo sa iglesia ang ito. For the past 28 years, we have, seen, we have seen your faithfulness and your goodness. You are, ang, kayo po ang aming Jehovah Jireh. Kayo po ang aming Diyos na nagbigay ng karunungan sa mga leaders upang maitagu- maitaguyod ang gawain mo. Kayo po, ang nagdala ng mga kaluluwa sa iyong paanan. At salamat po, patuloy mo pagpalay ng iglesyang ito and even the leadership. Lord, thank you. Be with us now. Do you be the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Ephesians 4.16, let us do our part, let us minister in love, and let the church grow. Kaloban po ng Diyos ang kanyang iglesia ay lumalago. Definitely, that's the will of the Lord. It is God's will that His church will grow. Yet at the same time, sa premise na yan, na it is God's will that His church will grow. Malaman, makita din natin po sa banal na kasulatan kung paano lalago ang isang iglesia. Ako po ay sanay sa pag-church plan. When I was at Phoebe's College of Bible, junior year pa lamang po ako. Of course, first year, second year, required po kami doon na lalabas at mag-Christian service at uh, mag-share ng banal na kasulatan. But during my junior year and senior year sa Phoebe's College of Bible, ako po ay nag-church plant sa La Union. So imagine po yan na Friday pala ng hapon ay umaalis na po ako doon. Then Monday afternoon, sakalang po ako babalik sa Phoebe's College of Bible. So week after week po yan. Dahil kami po ay uh, mag-church plant, magba-Bible study po doon. At dito rin po, pagdating ng senior year ko, dito sa uh, Sampaloc Bible Church, yan po ang aking Christian service. At uh, nagpa-plant po kami ng church dyan sa meron kaming church along the release. Yan. Meron yan sa Welfareville, sa Mandaluyong. Sa labas, hindi sa loob. Tapos meron dyan sa Interior Boulevard. Meron dyan sa May New Era College. Ayan po ang pinupuntahan po namin. Meron din po sa Mindoro. At uh, kasakasama ko po noon yung... Wala, hindi pa tayo girlfriend. Hindi kita girlfriend pa noon eh. Oo. So kasakasama ko noon. Siya po ay dentist noon. At... Um, Hanggang ngayon, but uh, siya po ang kasakasama yan sa mag, uh, mag-share ng, ng, ng gospel and even sa medical dental mission. At yung Sampanog Bible Church po ay uh, mga young professionals. But I have seen these young people, young professionals during that time, na they are using their spiritual gifts. Yung binasa po natin kanina, it has something to do with the gifting of the Spirit 
of which those gifts will be used by the Lord in order for the church to mature, to grow. And um, this afternoon, tatlong puntos lang po ang ating pag-usapan. Ilang minuto po? Asang oras? Sigurado ka sa sinasabi mo, ha? <laughs> Ayan na, mabibiro kita yung mga pastor na malapit po sila sa akin. Uh, sila po ay aking mga uh, kaibigan. So here, the first one is yung pagbabigay ng, ng Panginoon ng kaloob. Nung tinanggap niyo po ang Panginoon bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas ng iyong buhay, ay meron po kayong kaloob. It could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four. But, ang gusto ko lang sabihin ng bawat isa sa atin po ay mayroong kaloob. At ito po binanggit, actually hindi lang po ito ang kaloob ng chapter, uh, chapter 4, pero makita nyo rin sa chapter 12 ng Book of Romans, verses 6 to 8. And even 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, the spiritual gifts are, are listed or were listed sa mga talata niyan. And the spiritual gifts are mentioned not only sa text natin, kundi dun sa mga talata sa Romans 12 at 1 Corinthians 12. And the spiritual gifts were given primarily for the church. And for the purpose of what? In order for the church to grow. I'd like to say at the outset that when we talk about spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts are not for personal consumption. Hindi po para sa inyo po yan. Hindi po para sa ating sarili, kundi ang, ang, ang spiritual gift, ang mga kaloob ng Panginoon na ibinagay niya sa bawat isa ay hindi para sa personal na bagay, kundi para sa iglesia. So if we say that ito ang akwan natin, uh, the Lord some gave us apostles. Iwan ko lang po kung, kung naniniwala ko dyan, di pa ako naniniwala na meron na apostoles ngayon. Pero kung naniniwala ko kay Kibuloy, bahala kayo. Pero the apostles, these are hand-picked. Hand-picked po yan ng ating Panginoon Yesu Kristo. At uh, sila po ay saksi. Sila po ay saksi sa ating Panginoon Yesu Kristo. They were with Him. They experienced Him. They were being taught by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yan po ang mga apostles. Twelve apostles. At meron din pong evangelist. Ito po ay ito yung mga nag uh, sabi natin nagpa-plant ng church, nag-evangelize, nagse-share ng salita ng Panginoon. And they are sharing their faith one on one. Hindi lang po yung evangelist, mga iba't ibang kaloob po diyan na binanggit sa banal na kasulatan. So, hindi lang po apostles, meron din prophets. Hindi po ako naniniwala, gusto ko lang po sabihin sa inyo, uh, na yung profeta po na binabanggit dito, ito yung mga mouthpiece ng Diyos. At yung prophets dito, it has nothing to do with something like, sabihin nila, oy alam ko kung kailan darating ang Panginoon. Ibig sabihin po yan, Hindi totoong profeta po yan. Dahil ang banal na kasulatan ay nagsasabi na kahit ang Panginoon si Kristo ay hindi niya alam ang kanyang pagdating. Tapos itong profetang ito na nagsasabi na siya ay profeta ay alam niya kung kailan darating si Kristo. But the prophets here are the ones who are yung tinatawag natin na fourth telling. They are the one preaching the gospel. They are the one Sabihin natin ito yung mga mga ngaral ng salita ng Panginoon. And not their message, but the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a fabricated message. Ito yung corresponding to the Old Testament na thus says the Lord. And it is very important for us to underscore that. Baka mamaya paglabas ninyo, ay ako, ako ay profeta, ako ay apostle, huwag kayong maniniwala doon. Kasi pag naniniwala kayo doon, ay nako, nakikiliti ang kanilang mga tenga. Ayan. Kung ano ang kanilang mga binabanggit. 
So, God gave these apostles, these prophets, and these evangelists ang Panginoon po, ang banal ng Espiritu actually na kaloob ng mga, mga kaloob na ito. What is the point? What is the point? Yun lang po ang tatlo ko binabanggit, pero a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, spiritual gift na binabanggit po sa banal na kasulatan. My point is this, that the spiritual gift is not for personal consumption, kundi para sa ikalalago ng iglesia. So, if you have the gift of teaching, then teach. If you have the gift of, of, of uh, if you are an, sabihin natin evangelist, then evangelize. If you have the gift of singing, then sing. If you have the gift of service, then serve. It is for the church. You just imagine, kung lahat, kung bawat isa sa atin na may kaloob, I will say that the church will never be the same again if we are utilizing the gifts that God has given us. God gave these gifts. And of course, sabi natin sa isang gift naman yung pastor. Meron din teachers, pastor teachers. And we thank the Lord that we have pastor teachers here. We have musicians here. Ako, bigyan mo ako ng ganyan, naku po, hindi ako marunong. Oh, sige nga, kung walang kakanta. Imposible yung isang iglesia na walang marunong umawit. Kahit key of do. Oh. So we thank the Lord, you young people. Well, I'm very happy that you're utilizing your gift. And we have the pastors, we have the leaders, we thank the Lord that Alam niyo po, yung, yung iglesia, imposible yung iglesia na walang kaloob. Bawat isa po sa atin. In other words, kailangan po natin gamitin kung gusto natin na lalago ang ating iglesia. Again, gifts are there. It's not for you. It's for the church. Kaya kung titingnan natin, ano pong layunin? Kung tinan natin yung verse 12. The gifts are to equip the saints for the work of service. The gifts are to equip the saints for the work of service. Tingnan po natin in chapter 4 verse 12. He did this to prepare all God's people for the work of Christian service in order to build up the body of Christ. Ibinigay yan po ng Panginoon para may handa ang mga anak ng Diyos para sa isang gawain, para sa paglilingkod. So again, having said that, what are we going to do with our gifts? If it is for the purpose of equipping the saints and building up the body of Christ, you see, gift is not for personal consumption, but it is for the edification of the body of Christ. Beloved in the Lord, tayo na binigyan, kailangan po gamitin po natin yan sa loob, sa, sa iglesia. Kung gusto natin lumago po ang iglesia, kailangan po magkaisa na magamit ang, kalo, ang kaloob ng Diyos. Alam niyo po, sa tagal ko na naglilingkod sa Panginoon, you just imagine 78 years old na yung iglesia. Pero ang sumasamba ay tetrenta. Anong ginawa? E yung pala, Hindi na nga ako magbanggit ng pangalan ko ng iglesia na yan. Yan ang kagandahan pag ikaw ay pumupunta sa iba't ibang iglesia. Hindi sa may chismis mo. No, hindi naman. Ang sinasabi ko lang, for 78 years, you just imagine 30, 50. What's going on? Ano po at talaga nangyari at natuklasan ko po na sila po ay nag-aaway-away sa loob ng iglesia. Dahil hindi nila alam ko anong kaloob ninyo, dapat ako dyan, dapat ako dyan, dapat ako dyan. Kaya nga, pag yan ang gift ninyo sa music, 
Diyan kayo. Huwag mo nang sabihin na, oh, ako na mag-preach, pastor, bababa ka na dyan, ako na. Eh, hindi mo kaloob yun. So, you try to utilize your gift, you try to discover your gift, and use it for the glory of God. Alam niyo po, kinausap ko yung pastor na yun at saka yung mga, yung mga leaders ng church. Sabi ko, bakit ganun, tag-aquanan, 78 na ganyan-ganyan pa rin. So, anong kinausap ko? Sige, pastor, is it possible for you to come and ike, pag-usapan natin. Yung pala, tamad sa mga evangelism, ang mga miyembro ayaw mag-evangelize. Even if you don't have that gift of evangelizing, it is the responsibility of the church to share the gospel to anyone. Everybody is a child of God. Everybody experiences the grace of God and therefore you can share it. You have the gospel. It is not only for the pastors, it is not only for the leaders, but it is for everybody. Bawat isa po sa atin. Alam niyo po, ako po ay bunso. Ako, ay bun, ay, ako po ay bunso sa pamilya. At uh, meron pong masigasig na isang misyonero. Kakamatay lang po siya. 97 years old. Kailan lang siya namatay? One month ago? Two months ago? She was the one who shared the gospel. She has the gift of, of evangelism. Talaga naman, tinutukan niya ako, dinisciple niya ako. You just imagine, eight years old ako during that time no na share niya. That was in 1970. Alam niyo na kung anong edad ko. But she shared the gospel. And when she shared the gospel, then tiranggap ko, Kami naman kasi sa provincia noon, eh, meron namang interpreter. So, kahit English yan, tapos tinanggap ko yung Panginoon. You know what? Even after sharing the gospel, she discipled me. At kahit bago siya mamatay, when I visited there, alam mo sabi niya sa akin, pinagpe-pray kita at saka yung pamilya araw-araw. She has a lot of gifts. Evangelizing, she counsels, she teaches, and dami po, she serves, and dami po. Ang point ko lamang po is this, here is a missionary gifted by the Lord, shared the gospel to me, and I accepted the gospel, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and now, sabi ko nga, Alam mo, mami, sa, ang tawag sa na Ma'am Samuelson, if you know the Samuelson, sabi ko sa kanya, alam mo, I am what I am because of you na ginamit ng Panginoon. Nagsimula po sa akin yan, bali, uh, pito kami, nabaptize, yung lima, sumalangit na, kami na dalawa na lang naiwan, na share yung gospel, and through us, we were baptized in 1975. Ngayon, punta ko sa Cagayan Valley. Ang dami ng churches nagsimula lang sa pito. Dami ng churches. Because these are the people na talaga, they were utilizing their gift. The church grew, not just in number, but also, not just in quantity, but also quality. Eh ngayon na, nagpapadala na dito sila sa Phoebes na mag-aaral, then babalik sila doon. Napakaganda po. Because ito yung isang tao na hindi niya talagang kinip yung kanyang spiritual gift at ginamit niya at through that, through that uh, missionary, a lot of people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are talking, let us do our part. Kung ang bawat isa sa atin, what a great joy, a great joy and encouragement if each every member of the church will do his or her part in evangelizing, will do his or her part in leading the worship, 
will do his or her part and even cleaning. Kung alimbawa, ito yung mga kwa na yan, di ba? Yung mga upuan. You just imagine kung pagdating dito ng Sunday, si pastor, siya pa rin naglilinis, tapos siya pa rin nag-aayos ng upuan. Ay naku! Nangyari na dyan sa akin dyan sa so Sampalok Bible Church noon. Kasi nag-start ako ng Tagalog service. Ako po ang pianista, ako pa sa song leader, ako pa, mag, ako pa MC, ako pa, lahat. Sabi ko, hindi magtatagal ako dyan. Walang tao na magtatagal dyan na jack of all trades, master of none. So ang ginawa ko, tinatrain ko sila si Imelda Manalo, ya, nandyan, nasa Fibias niya, siya na ngayon ang pianista ko, tapos yung mga young people, sila na nagli-lead, o ganun. Then the church, Lumago yung Tagalog service. Pagkatapos nung umalis ako, pumunta ako ng, kan, pumunta ako ng Amerika, ala, nawala yung Tagalog. Ano ba nangyari na naman? Because not everybody utilizing his or her gift. The purpose of the gift is for the edification if we want our church to grow then we have to maximize, utilize our gift. Verses 12 to 13. The final goal God has for His church is to grow. To grow in unity, maturity, and Christ-likeness. If we want the church to grow, then nandyan dapat yung mga elemento. Lalo dun sa pagkakaisa. Kaya nga, even if we have diverse gift, magkakaiba ang ating kaloob, pero nagkakaisa tayo isang hangarin na mapalago ang iglesia, mapalawak ang gawain ng Panginoon. We need to be united. Magkaisa po. The goal is for the church to grow and be built up. 28 years old na po ang church. Okay, 28 years old. We praise the Lord that you're there. Nandiyan kayo. And we hope that after one year or two years, we pray that if everybody is doing his or her part, remember this day, it will never be the same again. Hindi na yung, hindi sa nagsasawa kami sa inyong mga muka, no. Pero gusto din namin makakita ng bagong muka na nakakilala sa Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng inyong paggamit sa iyong kaloob. Sino ba magkapagsabi na yun na isyeran sa Cagayan Valley na kung saan ay yung short ko noon hanggang dyan lang o, oh, butas-butas pa, tapos kaganyan-ganyan pa ako pag nagme-memorize ako kasi nahuhulog. Tapos gumagawa ako ng yung banana stock, di ba? kasi taga-Cagayan Valley ako, wala akong maibili na na taw belt noon. So gumagawa ako, kumukuha ako doon sa banana stock. Pagkatapos ginaganon ko siya, so yan ang belt ko na. Oh. Sino ba naman makapagsabi? And now, he is the 10th president of Phoebus. I'm not putting myself into the pedestal, but just want to highlight what did that one woman do? when she shared the gospel. Yung Amerikano na yan, kumakain pa ng bagoong yan dun. Kumakain na malunggay. Building up the body of Christ. Building up the body of Christ. The goal is that the body will attain the unity of the faith by knowing well the Son of God. Kailangan po ang bawat isa sa atin na gamitin po natin ang kaloob magkakaisa para sa ikalalagon ng iglesia. 
The goal is that the body will grow, na magiging mature. Especially if you have the gift of teaching, then teach. If you have the gift of preaching, then preach. Lalo po dun sa pagtuturo sa mga Sunday school teachers natin, meron po kayong kaloob na binigay sa pagtuturo, magturo po. Kailangan po yan, kailangan po yan ng mga bata kahit makukulit yan. Yung mga bata niyan, you just don't know. Somehow, someday, they will grow. When they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. Teach. Preach. Sa mga Sunday school teachers, kailangan po na gamitin po natin kung meron kang kaloob sa pagtuturo. Alam niyo po, ang dami ngayon na kung saan ay kung ano-ano na lang ang tinuturo. Yung mga iba po dyan, nag attend na lang sila sa, for example, punta sila sa Korea, magse-seminar sila doon. Pagkatapos, pag-seminar, balik sila sa Pilipinas, kung ano natutunan sila doon, ilalagay nila dito, eh mali naman. Kailangan bantayan din ang mga itinuturo. Dahil po sa ngayon, ang dami po nagtuturo kung ano naman ang tinuturo. Hindi naman talaga galing sa banal na kasulatan. Then the church, instead of growing, the church ay nag-split because of doctrinal differences. Do your part. Let us do our part. But it's not just a form of participating. Yes, there is goodness in participation. But it is not just mere participation, but participation tainted with love. Kailangan po na nandyan yung pag-ibig. Because somehow, even if you have that gift, for example, you have the gift of teaching. At nagturo ka ngayon ng Sunday School. At yung mga bata dyan ay makukulit. Tapos wala kang tiyaga, wala kang pagmamahal. Kinamit mo nga iyong kaloob pero wala kang compassion pagmamahal sa bata. It will not do good. It should be tainted with love. It should be tainted with love. All these gifts, regardless of gift, even in the area of music, kahit marunong kakumanta kung walang pag-ibig yan, kahit magaling ka mag magtumugtog ng music, kung hindi mo mahal ang iyong ginagawa at hindi mo alam na yung ginagawa mo ay para sa kalulwatian ng Diyos, that gift is useless and it will be taken out of you. Do your part. Do your part. And do it with love. Kaya nga, the challenge for each and every one of us, in order for the church to grow, you recognize your gift, you utilize your gift because Everybody has a gift and God wants you to use that gift for His glory and honor. You know, as far as the church is concerned, the church is not a car where the pastors do all the driving. Or the leaders do all the driving. Diba nga, minsan, meron pa yung experience ko na nasa Estados Unidos ako, alam nyo po, yung isang pastor, pag may darating na mga miyembro, siya pa nagpapastor, pagkatapos siya tagahatid sa punta ng airport, siya tagasundo, punta ng airport, pag may bisita, naku, trabaho ng pastor lahat. Nasaan yung miyembro? Yes, The church is a body. 
The church is a body, and everyone has a function to perform, a part to play. So if it is a body, pag Asian tagatingin, pag Irishian tagapakinig yan. Hindi pwede ito, ito lang. Kahit meron ito, kung wala ito, papano? Kaya nga, it is a body. So, every member is part of that body. Nobody is exempted. Kayo lahat po. Picture with me. Picture with me na isang gawain, for example, pagtatayo ng isang building. Kung lahat po ay karpintero, may matatapos. Eh kung hindi marunong magmason, you just picture the building. But when lahat ay na-recognize niya kung saan siya, na siya po ay talagang tagakuha lang ng bato, tagakuha ng buhangin, siya din ay taga, taga palitada, tapos siya ang taga, taga tingin kung straight ba o tama. You just imagine the beautiful outcome of their product. That's the same with the church. When everybody is doing or participating. Beloved in the Lord, Are we doing our responsibility? Are we participating? Are we ministering in love? Makamamaya, if you have the gift of counseling, pagkatapos nag-counsel ka, teka muna, during the prayer meeting, na-share mo. <laughs> Nako po. Nangyayari yan, yung prayer meeting, nagiging chismisan. No, 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 no. Here, you minister in in love. It's not only the responsibility. Ang kulang po, ang kulang po sa iglesia ay yung merong pagmamahal, merong pong compassion sa bawat miyembro ng iglesia. But mind you, it will not just be the pastors or leaders that will do that. But every member of the church. Pag merong mga sakit, at ang, ang, ang kwal lang po, nangyayari po kasi pag may mga sakit, saka lang po binibisita. Pero pag buhay na buhay naman, magtatanong naman, bakit ka nandito? May, parang akala nila, pag may sakit ka lang, bibisitahin. No. You need to be there and encourage. If that is the gift that God has given you, Beloved in the Lord, for us to be enlarged, for us to grow as a church, we need to utilize our gift, we need to participate, we need to do it in love, and let the church grow. The church primarily will not grow because of programs. Even if you have good programs inside the church, it's good you have programs. But even if you have good programs, if those people that are there implementing the programs do not have heart for the church and for what they're doing, and they are misplaced, in other words, hindi yun po ang kaloob ng Panginoon. When we, together with my wife, go to different places, we are very observant as how to. Tinitingnan po namin yung mga iglesia. I'm not speaking parang itataas ko yung mga pastors. Don't you know 
Now we have a lot of wounded pastors and Christian workers. Umiiyak po ako. And that's the very reason why ito next week we will be going to summer to minister to more than 200 pastors in one area and another more than 100 pastors in one area. You know what? We have a lot of wounded pastors, missionaries, and Christian workers. At alam nyo po kung saan nang gagaling. sa mga miyembro. I'm not saying na ganyan po kayo. But just to let you know that our pastors, our Christian workers need encouragement. And at the same time, nung tinanong sila, bakit ganyan? Kasi din, ang pastor din ay instead na magpapastor nagne-networking. Pinapakita ko lang po sa inyo yung realidad ng ministeryo na kung saan po ay nangyayari ng mga ito. Dahil ano nga ba? Ano nga ba ang layunin bakit naitatag ang iglesia? Naitatag ang iglesia is for us to really encourage one another. We fellowship. We encourage one another. We uh, sharpen like iron sharpens iron. It's not just a mere gathering, fellowshipping, but there's something there that needs to be established as a church. Because we are one body. Kung ang paano mo inaalagaan yung sarili mo, just take note of this, nobody hates his own body. If you love your body, that's what you will do to the body of Christ. Subukan mo na hindi mo pakainin ang iyong sarili. What will happen? Subukan mo na hindi mo alagaan ang iyong sarili. What will happen? That's the same thing because as far as our text is concerned, church is the body of Christ. You are talking about participation. You are talking about love, ministering. Then, only then, by the power of the Spirit, the church will grow. It is impossible. Hindi ko maisip kayang arukin na isang iglesia, na isang iglesia, na nagsama-sama sa gawain ng Diyos, alam nilang kanilang kaloob, imposible na nagmi-minister sila ng merong pag-ibig na wala nangyayari sa loob ng iglesia. Imposible na hindi lalago ang iglesia. Beloved in the Lord, let us involve, let us be engaged. That's the term. Engaged. Do the work of the ministry. Every member of the church is a minister. Every member of the church is a servant. Every member of the church has a gift. And therefore, if every member has a gift, for sure, if those gifts will be utilized, the church will grow. Alam niyo po, Christianity is not a spectator sport. Yung parang nagtitinginan na lang kung ano ang nangyayari. Di ba? Meron kang kaloob ng, ng, ng singing, pagkatapos tinitingnan mo lang yung mga young people, alam niyo kanina tuwang-tuwa ako. Tuwang-tuwa ako dun sa mga nanay, tatay na nandito sa harap. Every Sunday ba yun? O occasional choir? 
yung choir na pang occasion. <laughs> may okay kaya tawag ng occasional choir. <laughs> Pero ang ganda po. The way you sang, the... you just imagine. You just imagine if everybody is singing. Posible na kayo hindi kayo marunong kumanta. Tamad lang kayo, hindi kayo kasasama sa pagkanta. Pero marunong kayong kumanta. But the joy, thank you po. You encourage me this afternoon. Because very rare na sa aking pagsasalita po, Sunday after Sunday, puno po yung aking, alam po ni Pastor Yan, yung aking kalendaryo. Pero first time ako nakakita ng ganyan. Tuloy-tuloy nyo po, not just this Sunday, sa sunod sa Sunday ulit. Oh. Oo. I trust that it will not the beginning and the end. You see the joy? You see the joy when everybody is participating? You see the smile? You see the encouragement? Church will grow to maturity in Christ. And as we utilize our gift, people will be edified and in the end, the Lord will be glorified. 28 years of existence your church existed for 28 years and we will pray for another 28 years. It's my prayer that each and every one of us will do his or her part. For sure. Hindi na kayo magkasya dito. May second service na kayo. May third service na kayo. That's the purpose why we are here. That's the purpose why the Lord has given you that gift. Not for yourself, but for the body, for the edification of the body of Christ. Ang pinakamaganda to, ang mag, uh, pinakamaganda po dyan, na habang ginagawa po natin ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa atin, nandyan naman yung pangako niya sa atin na siya po ang magbibigay ng karunungan, siya po ay namamalagi sa atin. And for sure, mga kapatid, masasabi natin later on sa ating susunod na henerasyon, na ginawa natin ang ating responsibilidad bilang isang mananampalataya. So keep serving the Lord. Napakasarap po maglingkod sa Panginoon. Until now, napakasarap po at kung bigyan pa ako ng Panginoon na marami pang taon, this one life na binago ng Diyos at patuloy na binabago ng Diyos ay maglilingkod habang merong hininga. Dahil po, kaloob ng Diyos, binigyan ako ng kaloob ng Diyos sa pagtuturo, binigyan ako ng kaloob sa paglilingkod, ano ang gagawin ko sa ating mga kaloob? Praise God! When I teach, now I see many graduates already from Phoebus, and when I see them, Nakatayo sa harap, nagpipreach sila. Wow! That's the joy of a teacher. That's the joy, the joy of a pastor if he sees everybody growing in the Lord. Growing in the knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the joy. And the joy of everyone if everyone ministers na merong pag-ibig. Nawa po. Panalangin ko sa loob ng iglesia, wala pong alitan, kundi nandyan yung pagmamahalan 28 years 
Patuloy ko yung pagbuklo rin ng Panginoon at lalo pa, lalo pa lalawak ang, pang- ang gawain ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng iyong paggamit sa inyong mga kaloob na binigay ng Diyos. Our Father, we thank you for the 28 years you have given to this church. Thank you for our pastors. Meron silang kanya-kanyang mga dinadaan sa buhay. And we thank you for their ministry. We thank you for their lives. Lord, it is our prayer that you continue to bless them. Encourage mo sila. Alam po namin na yung, yung, um, their labor in you is not in vain. Pray for the leaders of the church. Lord, thank you for their desire to be of great help to your church. We pray that you encourage them. Lord, pray for this church that whatever the need of the church, Lord, you just pour out your blessings upon them. Salamat po sa bawat miyembro ng iglesia. Bawat miyembro ng iglesia ay merong lugar. Nilagay mo sa loob ng iglesia dahil meron kang layunin ng isang kaluluwang ito. This one life will be used by you to encourage one another and for your church to grow. Such a great joy, Lord, to see your people serving you. Bless them. Bless each and every one of them. To you be the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.